the Temple of Fame Alexander Pope in that soft season, when descending show single quote s call forth the greens, and wake the rising flow single quote s. When opening buds salute the welcome day, and earth relenting feels the genial day, as balmy sleep had charmed my cares to rest, and love itself was banished from my breast, what time the morn mysterious visions brings while pure slumbers spread their golden wings at reign of phantoms in wild orderos, and, joined, this intellectual sense compose. I stood, methought, betwixt earth, seas, and skies. The whole creation opened to my eyes, in air self blanked hung the globe below, where mountains rise and circling oceans flow. Here naked rocks, and empty wastes were seen, their tory cities, and the forest green, here sailing ships delight the wandering eyes, their trees, and intermingled temples rise. Now a clear sun the shining scene displays, the transient landscape now in clouds decays. O'er the wide prospect as I goes the round, sudden I heard a wild promiscuous sound, like broken thunders that at distance roar, then gazing up, a glorious pile beheld, whose towering summit ambient clouds concealed. High on a rock of ice the structure lay, Steep its ascent, and slippery was the way. The wondrous rock-like Parian marble shone, and seemed, to distant sight, of solid stone. Inscriptions here of various names of Ute, the greater part by hostile time subdued. Yet what was spread their fame in ages past, and poets once had promised they should last. Some fresh engraved appeared of wits renowned. I looked again, nor could their trace be found. Critics I saw, that other names deface and fix their own, with labor, in their place, their own, like others, soon their place resigned, or disappeared, and left the first behind. Nor was the work impaired by storms alone, but felt this approaches of too warm a sun. For fame, impatient of extremes, decays not more by envy than excess of praise. Yet part no injuries of heaven could feel, like crystal faithful to this graving steel, the rock's high summit, in the temple's shade nor heat could melt, nor beating storm invade. Their names inscribed, unnumbered ages passed from time's first birth, with time itself shall last. These ever new, nor subject to decays, spread, and grow brighter with the length of days. So Zembla's rocks, the beauteous work of frost, rise white in air, and glitter o'er the coast. Pale suns, unfelt, at distance roll away, and on this impassive ice the lightnings play. Eternal snows the growing mass supply, till the bright mountains prop this incumbent sky, as Atlas fixed, each hoary pile appears, the gathered winter of a thousand years. On this foundation fame's high temple stands. Stupendous pile. Not reared by mortal hands. What e'er proud Rome or artful Greece beheld, or elder Babylon, its frame excelled. Four faces had the dome, and every face a various structure, but of equal grace. Four brazen gates, on columns lifted high, salute the different quarters of the sky. Here fabled chiefs in darker ages born, or were these old, whom arms or arts adorn, whose cities ride, or time a monstrous race. The walls in venerable order grace, heroes in animated marble frown, and legislators seem to think in stone. Westward, a sumptuous frontispiece appeared, on dark pillars of white marble reared, crowned with an architrave of antique mold, and sculpture rising on the roughened mold, in shaggy spoils here Nicias was beheld, and Perseus dreadful with Minerva's shield, their great all sides stooping with his toil, rests on his club, and holds this Hesperian spoil. Here Orpheus sings. Trees moving to the sound start from their roots, and form a shade around, Amphion there the loud creating lyre strikes, and beholds a sudden Thebes aspire. Sitha on Zeko's answer to his call, and half the mountain rolls into a wall, there might you see the lengthening spires ascend, the domes swell up, the widening arches bend, the growing toe single quote s, like exhalations rise, and the huge columns heave into the skies. The eastern front was glorious to behold, with diamond flaming, and barbaric gold. There Ninus shone, who spread this Assyrian fame, and the great founder of the Persian name. There in long robes the royal magi stand, grave Zoroaster waves the circling wand, the sage Chaldeans rubbed in white appeared, and Brahmins, deep in desert woods revered. These stopped the moon, 
and called this unbuddied shades to midnight banquets in the glimmering glades, made visionary fabrics round them rise, and airy spectres skim before their eyes. Of talismans and sigils knew the pal single quotar, and careful watched the planetary hour. Superior, and alone, Confucius stood, who taught that useful science, to be good. But on the south, a long majestic rays of Egypt's priests the gilded niches grace, who measured earth, described the starry spheres, and tracked the long records of lunar years. High on his car Sesostris struck my view, whom sceptered slaves in golden harness drew, his hands a bow and pointed javelin hold. His giant limbs are armed in scales of gold. Between the statues obelisks were plucked, and the learned walls with hieroglyphics cracked. Of Gothic structure was the northern side, o'erwrought with ornaments of barbarous pride. Their huge colossus rose, with trophies crowned, and runic characters were graved around. There sat Simulgsis with erected eyes, and Odin here in mimic trunces dies. There on rude iron combs, smeared with blood, the horrid forms of Scythian heroes stood, druids and bards, their once loud harps unstrung, and youths that died to be by poets sung. These and a thousand more of doubtful fame, to whom old fables gave a lasting name, in ranks adorned the temple's outward face, the wall and luster and effect like glass, which o'er each object casting various dyes, enlarges some, and others multiplies, nor void of emblem was the mystic wall, for thus romantic fame increases all. The temple shakes, the sounding gates unfold, wide vaults appear, and roofs of fretted gold. Ride on a thousand pillars, wreathed around with laurel foliage, and with eagles crowned, of bright, transparent barrel were the walls, the free as is gold, and gold the capitals, as heaven with stars, the roof with jewels glows, and ever living lamps depend in rows. Full in the passage of each spacious gate, the sage historians and white garments wait. Graved o'er their seats the form of time was found, his scythe revered, and both his pinions bound. Within stood heroes, who throw loud alarms in bloody fields pursued renowned in arms. High on a throne with trophies charged, I viewed the youth that all things but himself subdued. His feet on scepters and tiaras trod, and his horned head belied the Libyan god. There Caesar, cracked with both Minerva's, shone. Unmoved, superior still in every state, and scarce detested in his country's fate. But chief were those, who not for empire fought. But with their toils their people's safety bought, high o'er the rest Epimenon is stood. Tremolian, glorious in his brother's blood. Bold Scipio, savior of the Roman state. Great in his triumphs, in retirement great. And wise Aurelius, in whose well-taught mind with boundless pow single quotar unbounded virtue joined, his own strict judge, and patron of mankind. Much suffering heroes next their honors claim, those of less noisy and less guilty fame, fair virtue's silent train, supreme of these here ever shines the godlike Socrates, he whom ungrateful Athens could expel, at all times just, but when he signed the shell, here his abode the martyred Phocian claims, with Aegis, not the last of Spartan names, unconquered Cato shews the wound he tore, and Brutus his ill genius meets no more. But in the center of the hallowed choir, six pompous columns o'er the rest aspire, Around the shrine itself of fame they stand, hold the chief honors, and the fame command. High on the first, the mighty Homer shone. Eternal adamant composed his throne. Father of verse. In holy fillets dressed, his silver beard waved gently o'er his breast. Though blind, a boldness in his looks appears. In years he seemed, but not impaired by years. The wars of Troy were round the pillar scene. Here fierce Tadides wounds the Cyprian queen. Here Hector glorious from Patroclus fall, here dragged in triumph round the Trojan wall, motion and life did every part inspire, bold was the work, and proved the master's fire. A strong expression most he seemed to affect, and here and there disclosed a brave neglect. A golden column next in rank appeared, on which a shrine of purest gold was reared. Finished the whole, and labored every part. With patient touches of unweary dart, the mantran there in sober triumph sate, composed his posture, and his look sedate. On Homer still he fixed a reverend eye, great without pride, in modest majesty. In living sculpture on the sides were spread the Latian wars, and haughty Turnus dead. 
Eliza stretched upon the funnel pier, Aeneas ending with his aged sire, Troy flamed in burning gold, and o'er the throne arms of the man in golden cipher shone. Force once sustain a car of silver bright, with heads advanced, and pinions stretched for flight, here, like some furious prophet, Pandar rode, and seemed to labor with this inspiring god. Across the harp a careless hand he flings, and boldly sinks into the sounding strings. The figured games of Greece the column grace, Neptune and Jove survey the rapid race. The youths hand o'er their chariots as they run. The fiery steeds seem starting from the stone. The champions in distorted postures threat. And all appear irregularly great. Here happy Horus chinned this Lasonian lyre to sweeter sounds, and tempered Pindar's fire, pleased with all case manly rage to infuse the softer spirit of the Sapphic muse. The polished pillar different sculptures grace. A work outlasting monumental brass. Here smiling loves and bacchanals appear, the Julian star, and great Augustus here, the doves that round the infant poet spread myrtles and bays, hung hovering o'er his head. Here in the shrine that cast a dazzling light, Sate fixed and thought the mighty stodgerit. His sacred had a radiant zodiac crowned, and various animals his sides surround. His piercing eyes, erect, appear to view superior worlds, and look all nature through. With equal rays a mortal tully shone, the Roman Ross deck the consul's throne, gathering his flowing robe, he seemed to stand and act to speak, and graceful stretched his hand. Behind, Rome's genius waits with civic crowns, and the great father of his country owns. These massy columns in a circle rise, o'er which a pompous dome invades the skies, scarce to the top I stretched my aching sight, so large it spread, and swelled to such a height. Full in the midst proud fame's imperial seat, with jewels blazed, magnificently great. The vivid emeralds there revive the eye, the flaming rubies shew their sanguine dye, bright azure rays from lively sapphires stream, and lucid amber casts a golden gleam. With various colored light the pavement shone, and all on fire appeared the glowing throne. The dome's high arch reflects the mingled blaze, and forms a rainbow of alternate rays. When on the goddess first I cast my sight, scarce seemed her stature of a cubit's height. But swelled to larger size, the more I gust, till to the roof her toe ring front she ride. With her, the temple every moment grew, and ampler vistas opened to my view, upward the columns shoot. The roofs ascend, and arches widen, and long aisles extend. Such was her form as ancient bards have told, wings raise her arms, and wings her feet enfold. A thousand busy tongues the goddess bears, and thousand open eyes, and thousand listening ears. Beneath, in order ranged, the tuneful nine her virgin handmaids still attend the shrine, with eyes on fame forever fixed, they sing. For fame they raise the voice and tune the string. With time's first birth began the heavenly lays, and last, eternal, throw the length of days. Around these wonders as I cast a look, the trumpet sounded, and the temple shoe, and all the nations, summoned at the call, from different quarters fill the crowded hall, of various tongues the mingled sounds were heard. In various garbs promiscuous throngs appeared, thick as the bees, that with the spring renewed their flow retoils and sip the fragrant dew, when the winged colonies first tempt the sky, o'er dusky fields and shaded waters fly, or settling, seize the sweets the blossoms yield, and a low murmur runs along the field. Millions of suppliant crowds the shrine attend, and all degrees before the goddess bend. The poor, the rich, the valiant and the sage, and boasting youth, and narrative old age. Their pleas were different, their request the same for good and bad alike are fond of fame. Some she discracked, and some with honors crowned. Unlike successes equal merits found. Thus her blind sister, fickle fortune, reigns, and, undiscerning, scatters crowns and chains. First at the shrine the learned world appear, and to the goddess thus prefer their play single quo tar. Am person quo. Long have we sought to instruct and please mankind, with studies pale with midnight vigils blind. But thanked by few, rewarded yet by none, we here appeal to thy superior throne, on wit and learning the just prize bestow, for fame is all we must expect below. Am person quo. The goddess heard, and bade the muses raise the golden trumpet of eternal praise, 
From pole to pole the winds diffuse the sound, that fills the circuit of the world around. Not all at once, as thunder breaks the cloud. The notes at first were rather sweet than loud, by just degrees they every moment rise, fill the wide earth, and gain upon the skies. At every breath were balmy odors shed, which still grew sweeter as they wider spread. Less fragrant scents this unfolding rose exhales, or spices breathing in Arabian gales. Next these the good and just, an awful train, thus on their knees address the sacred fane. Ampersand quo. Since living virtue is with envy cursed, and the best men are treated like the worst, do thou, just goddess, call our merits forth, and give each deed this exact intrinsic worth. Ampersand quo. Ampersand quo. Not with bare justice shall your act be crowned and quo. Said fame. Ampersand quo. But high above desert renowned, let fuller notes this applauding world amaze, and the full loud clarion labor on your praise. Ampersand quo. This band dismissed, behold another crowd the constant tenor of, whose well-spent days no less deserved a just return of praise. But straight the dearful trump of slander sounds. Throw the big dome the doubling thunder bounds. Loud as the burst of cannon rends the skies, the dire report throw every region flies, in every ear incessant rumors rung, and gathering scandals grew on every tongue. From the black trumpet's rusty concave broke so furious flames, and clouds of rolling smoke, the poisonous vapor blots the purple skies, and withers all before it as it flies. A troop came next, who crowns an armor war, and proud defiance in their looks they bore, ampers and quo. For the end quo. They cried, Ampers and quo. Amidst alarms and strife, we sailed in tempests down the stream of life. For the whole nations filled with flames and blood, and swam to empire through the purple flood. Those ills we dart, thy inspiration known, what virtue seemed, was done for thee alone. Ampers and quo. Ampers and quo. Ambitious fools. Ampers and quo. The queen replied, and frowned, Ampers and quo. Be all your acts in dark oblivion drowned. Their sleep forgot, with mighty tyrants gone, your statues moldered, and your names unknown. Ampers and quo. A sudden cloud straight snatched them from my sight, and each majestic phantom sunk in night. Then came the smallest tribe I yet had seen. Plain was their dress, and modest was their mien. Ampers and quo. Great idol of mankind. We neither claim the praise of merit, nor aspire to fame. But safe in deserts from this applause of men, would die unheard of, as we lived unseen. Tis all we beg thee, to conceal from sight those acts of goodness, which themselves requite. To follow virtue even for virtue's sake. Ampers and quo. Ampers and quo. And live there men, who slight their mortal fame? Who then with incense shall adore our name? But mortals. No, tis still our greatest pride to blaze those virtues, which the good would hide. Rise. Muses, rise. Add all your tuneful breath, these must not sleep in darkness and in death. Ampers and quo. She said, in air the trembling music floats, and on the winds triumphant swell the notes. So soft, though high, so loud, and yet so clear, even listening angels lean from heaven to hear. To farthest showers this ambrosial spirit flies, sweet to the world, and grateful to the skies. Next these a youthful train their vows expressed, with feathers crowned, with gay embroidery dressed, ampers and quo. Hither, ampers and quo. They cried, ampers and quo. Direct your eyes, and see the men of pleasure, dress, and gallantry. Ours is the place of banquets, balls, and plays, sprightly our nights. Polite are all our days. Courts we frequent, where tis our pleasing care to pay due visits, and address the fair. In fact, tis true, no nymph we could persuade, but still in fancy vanquished eve we made. Of unknown duchesses lewd tales we tell, yet, would the world believe us, all were well. The joy let others have, and we the name, and what we want in pleasure, granting fame. Ampers and quo. The queen ascends. The trumpet rends the skies, and at each blast a lady's honor dies. Pleased with the strange success, vast numbers pressed around the shrine, and made the same request, Ampers and quo. What? You, 
Amperson Quo. She cried, Amperson Quo. And learn the arts to please, slaves to yourselves, and even fatigued with ease, who lose a length of undeserving days, would usurp the lover's dear bought praise. To jest contempt, ye vain pretenders, fall, the people's fable, and the scorn of all. Amperson Quo. Straight the black clarion sends a hard sound, loud laughs burst out, and bitter scoffs fly round, whispers are heard, with taunts revealing loud, and scornful hisses run through the crowd. Last, those who boast of mighty mischiefs done, enslave their country, or usurp a throne, or who their glorious dire foundation laid on sovereigns ruined, or on friends betrayed. Calm, thinking villains, whom no faith could fix of crude councils and dark politics. Of these a gloomy tribe surround the throne, and beg to make this immortal treasons known. The trumpet roars, long flaky flames expire, with sparks, that seem to set the world on fire. At the dread sound, pale mortals stood aghast, and startled nature trembled with the blast. This having heard and seen, and snatched me from the throne. Before my view appeared a structure fair, its sight uncertain, if in earth or air. With rapid motion turned the mansion round. With ceaseless noise the ringing walls resound. Not less in number were the spacious doors, than leaves on trees, or sand upon the shores, which still unfolded stand, by night, by day, previous to winds, an open every way. As flames by nature to the skies ascend, as weighty bodies to the center tend, as to the sea returning rivers toll and the touched needle trembles to the pole. Hither, as to their proper place, arise all various sounds from earth, and seas, and skies, or spoke aloud, or whispered in the ear. Nor ever silence, rest, or peace is here. As on the smooth expanse of crystal lakes the sinking stone at first a circle makes. The trembling surface by the motion stirred, spreads in a second circle, then a third. Wide, and more wide. The floating rings advance, fill all the watery plain, and to the margin dance, thus every voice and sound, when first they break, on thy bring air a soft impression make. Another ambient circle then they move, that, in its turn, impels the next above. Through undulating air the sounds are sent, and spread o'er all the fluid element. Their various news I heard of love and strife, of peace and war, health, sickness, death, and life of loss and gain, of famine and of store, of storms at sea, and travels on the shore, of prodigies, and portents seen in air, of fires and plagues, and stars with blazing hair, of turns of fortune, changes in the state, the falls of favorites, projects of the great, of old mismanagements, taxations new, all neither wholly false, nor wholly true. Above, below, without, within, around. Confessed. Unnumbered multitudes are found, who pass, repass, advance, and glide away. Hosts ride by fear, and phantoms of a day, astrologers, that future fates foreshew, projectors, quacks, and lawyers not a few, and priests, and party zealots, numerous bands with home-born lies, or tales from foreign lands. Each talked aloud, or in some secret place, and wild impatience start in every face. The flying rumors gathered as their old, scarce any tale was sooner heard than told. And all who told it added something new, and all who heard it, made enlargements too, in every ear it spread, on every tongue it grew. Thus flying east and west, and north and south, news traveled with increase from mouth to mouth. So from a spark, that kindled first by chance, with gathering force the quickening flames advance. Till to the clouds their curling heads aspire and to single quo taras and temples sink in floods of fire. When thus ripe lies are to perfection sprung, full grown, and fit to grace a mortal tongue, throw thousand vents, impatient, forth they flow, and rush in millions on the world below. Fame sits aloft, and points them out their course, their date determines, and prescribes their force, some to remain, and some to perish soon. Or wane and wax alternate like the moon. Around. A thousand winged wonders fly, borne by the trumpet's blast, and scattered through the sky. There, at one passage, oft you might survey a lie and truth contending for the way. And long t'was doubtful, both so closely penned, 
which first should issue through the narrow vent, at last agreed, together out they fly, inseparable now, the truth and lie. The strict companions are forever joined, and this or that unmixed, no mortal e'er shall find. While thus I stood, intent to see and hear, one came, methought, and whispered in my ear, what could thus high thy rash ambition raise? Art thou, fond youth, a candidate for praise? Tis true, said I, not void of hopes I came, for whoso fond as youth fill bards of fame? But few, alas! The casual blessing boast, so hard to gain, so easy to be lost. How vain that second life in others' breath, this estate which wits inherit after death. Ease, health, and life, for this they must resign, unsure the tenure, but how vast the fine! The great man's curse, without the gains endure, be envied, wretched, and be flattered, poor. All luckless wits their enemies professed, and all successful, jealous friends at best. Nor fame I slight, nor for her favors call. She comes unlooked for, if she comes at all. But if the purchase costs so dear a price, as soothing folly, or exalting vice, oh! If the muse must flatter lawless sway, and follow still where fortune leads the way. Or if no basis bear my rising name, but the fall and ruin of another's fame. Then teach me, heaven, to scorn the guilty base, drive from my breast that wretched lust of praise, unblemished let me live, or die unknown. O oh, grant an honest fame, or grant me none.